Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 8th, 2020, recorded on 1.13 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll take a look here at the latest CDAS sea surface temperatures here, the very tops of the waters and their actual temperatures. This is coming from tropicaltidbits.com. And a couple of interesting things to point out here. First of all, you continue to notice that we have a persistent area of uh, warming building back in across the Gulf of Mexico after Hurricane Hannah, of course, uh, came through and kind of passed through this region and through here. These water temperatures have rebounded quite nicely, and we'll see that here in another view in just a second. And after uh, Hurricane Isaias, again, these water temperatures have been mixed out a little bit across uh, the Gulf Stream here immediately along the Florida coastline, and you can kind of see where the general track was of Isaias along Florida and the Carolinas. Uh, but you can gradually see that this area is now starting to build back in some of these water temperatures up here got mixed up pretty good because, of the, you know, obviously you got, you know, low pressure like that and you get some of the bands coming in like that. And all the, the water, you know, the wind and it got kind of mixed up with a lot of this water. So those water temperatures up there have cooled, but they are now starting to rebound again quite nicely. This is kind of the contour of the Gulf Stream in through here. Elsewhere across the Atlantic Basin, continue to notice a very... Uh, very high numbers here in the Caribbean water temperatures running about 29 to 30 Celsius so these water temperatures are very warm for this time of the year certainly they are a little bit above the long-term average and across the deep tropics looking out here back towards the islands and then uh, Cabo, the Cabo uh, Verde Islands and Africa water temperatures running about 26 Celsius now and we can point out here where the Cabo Verde Islands actually are. The islands are located right here. And that 26 degree isotherm has now kind of moved all the way in north to the islands. This is one of those signs that, again, we are going to see these tropical waves come off in a better environment up here. Uh, now, if they come up further to the north, they're in a little bit better of a, a, a marine environment. And certainly the thermodynamic environment out here is a tad bit better. Uh, once you start getting out here, it's a little bit drier. And we'll talk about why that is here in a second. But uh, for the most part, this area is now getting ready to probably turn on the hurricane machines as we head throughout the next couple of weeks. So to kind of put all this warming in per uh, perspective here, this is basically, this is the upper ocean heat content as of August 2nd. So this is the upper ocean heat content on August 2nd. And I want uh, to kind of turn your attention to a few uh, areas here. This area out here in the southwestern Atlantic, watch this. Watch this area out here in the Gulf of Mexico, off the Carolina and Florida coastline, and then out here in the deep tropics. Watch those areas and how they warm up. This is August 2nd, August 8th, today. 2nd, 8th. 2nd, 8th. You notice how we've continued to see this persistent area of uh, these upper ocean heat content values now rising out here in the deep tropics as well. And that is one thing of kind of note that you can kind of tell uh, that that is one thing for sure. I'm trying to kind of get these aligned up nicely. Uh, but you can kind of tell how those areas have kind of warmed up quite substantially here uh, in the last couple of weeks or so. And you also notice more persistent area of warmth out here in the upper ocean heat content values in and around the uh, Cabo Verde Islands. Basically, what you're really looking for is these greens, yellows, and oranges. It's basically your upper third of the scale. But even these lighter contours of blue uh, indicates a more favorable environment for tropical cyclones to develop and maintain themselves, at least in the water temperature and depth sense. And especially once you get out here in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico and Southwestern Atlantic, where the upper ocean heat content values are significant, you could see stronger storms uh, if everything else kind of plays out to be equal. So what's really going on out there right now? Well, we do have one area in the Eastern Pacific with a 90% chance invest in 91E. In the Eastern Pacific Basin, this is not going to be a significant land concern uh, to any of the islands and land areas out here. 
But uh, this could still generate some swells that will obviously impact uh, Central America and Mexico and obviously the Baja of California and the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas. These areas might get some uh, higher surf, uh, certainly from that, uh, but we're not expecting any significant landfalling tropical cyclones. It's just not, the pattern is just not in place. This area is likely going to amount to a couple of more tropical cyclones before all is said and done in a favorable pattern then leapfrogs into the Atlantic. Uh, but we are likely to see at least two to three more tropical cyclones, if not more, in the Eastern Pacific and Southeast Pacific as time kind of goes on. And we'll talk about why that's going to be here in a second. In the Atlantic Basin, we do have an area of disturbance to watch. This has not been designated as an invest but only a 10% chance of development over the next five days and a peculiar wave coming off of Africa, which we'll take a look at now. Uh, this is the wave that we've been talking about. First of all, this is our disturbance with about the 10% chance. Not really expecting any significant development out of that. This is the wave that has my attention. And you can already start to see a pretty decent turning signature in the atmosphere already with a pretty good bundled area. So... It's certainly not bad looking. Now, this is likely not a low-level spin. This is a mid-level spin in the atmosphere, and that has kind of not worked its way down to the surface. And for it to kind of work its way down to the surface, you at least need another about 12 to 24-plus hours of, of thunderstorms really kind of uh, pertaining and persisting around that area uh, throughout the next 12, 24, 48 hours or so really a day or two of this type of shower and thunderstorm activity, deep convection firing near that mid-level center for it to eventually kind of work its way down to the surface. There is not a lot of wind shear across this area. This area is within relatively light shear, and it has some decent moisture, at least right now, but you can see right to its north, we have a pretty good pocket of dry air and Saharan air. Again, it's only August 8th, and the reason why we're getting this dry air is because of this, which are, this is, comes from Michael Ventris. Uh, he's a PhD major in tropical uh, cyclones and um, has done a lot of work with these Kelvin waves, which is what we're looking at here. Basically, the shaded areas is the Matt and Julian oscillation. And as we talked about yesterday, this brown shading to light yellow shading is uh, indicative of a suppressed Matt and Julian oscillation. The uh, brownish colors here that are in kind of the non-shaded areas, these uh, kind of circles and, and whatnot, these lines, are indicative of your suppressed convectively coupled Kelvin waves. These Kelvin waves uh, typically suppress the suppressive phase of the Kelvin waves, suppress Atlantic hurricane development, and these enhanced Kelvin waves enhance uh, the, per uh, the uh, upward moving air in the atmosphere and thus enhance and can induce tropical cyclone uh, genesis chances. The Mount and Julian oscillation is more of a kind of semi-permanent uh, feature that moves around from time to time. It's kind of on a transient thing. This is what we talked about with the interseasonal variability. We're going to have lulls in the break. We're going to have times where we don't have tropical cyclones, and that's a good thing, obviously. But just like in 2017, we saw a little bit of a break before everything kind of really kick-started. So what we're looking at here, this is basically today's chart updated as of today. A suppressed Kelvin wave and suppressed Matt and Julian oscillation, MGO, is basically over the Atlantic Basin right now, helping to kind of suppress some development. But as I just showed you, this is not really being suppressed. I mean, a little bit. Uh, but this is relatively... Uh, looking pretty favorable, actually, in terms of short-term uh, tropical cyclone formation chances. But as we go on now throughout week two, this is now going out to, to the second week here in this forecast, uh, heading out towards mid to late July, or I'm sorry, mid to late August, rather, the suppressive uh, Matt and Julian oscillation is actually now shifting and, and propagating back to the east. You notice how you're not getting this very dark, uh, looking brown colors, you're now in the lighter kind of shades of that, and you actually have a pretty favorable enhanced Kelvin wave over the area. This might help to induce another round of tropical cyclone genesis chances 
and certainly would increase the frequency and robustness in the tropical waves, these African easterly waves that come across and form off of Africa and then they kind of come across like that. That is going to be enhanced within the next about two weeks or so as we begin to kind of head uh, with time. And then you notice this very favorable Madden Julian oscillation that kind of settles up here, uh, moving into the Eastern Pacific and then eventually into the Atlantic. Now, like I said, the uh, Eastern Pacific Basin will likely kind of light up here for a little bit. Uh, but then, you know, we've seen a time before, though, where the Eastern Pacific was expected to light up with all these tropical cyclones, and they just never happen. And th for that reason in particular, I'm very skeptical in, in how much activity will occur out here in the Eastern Pacific. You just don't have as much of favorable conditions out there as you do in the Atlantic Basin, especially with an enhanced Kelvin wave passing over in the Mount of Julian Oscillation. These interseasonal variabilities are something that you really got to keep an eye on because things can flip like a switch really quickly. And I do believe that, you know, once this Mount of Julian Oscillation kind of comes through and, you know, give it a little bit of time, you know, it usually takes a couple of days there's a lag in the atmosphere basically uh, but once that kind of once the atmosphere has kind of caught up to this you know these uh, phases that are ongoing you either will see a reduction in these African easterly waves and suppressed development or a uh, an enhanced uh, favorability uh, window there in the Atlantic basin and, and goes for throughout the whole entire world in fact so for that matter there does look to be some chances beyond the next about 10 days or so uh, that we'll probably start to see the window of favorability starting to open up. And once that happens, we'll really have to watch these Kelvin waves. And again, this is all just a prediction. This isn't necessarily all set in stone, so it could go either way. And the fact that we're trying to see development in a suppressed phase of the Mount and Julian Oscillation We've already had three tropical cyclones in the main development region thus far this year in July. Very unprecedented, in, in fact, and it does seem to suggest that we will probably be ending up in a very busy peak hurricane season. Again, the peak is September 10th, and this goes out here to about late August. This will put us out to about August you know, 18th, 19th, or 20th or so in that range throughout the next two weeks. So that will be something we really have to keep an eye on here. And uh, certainly I will be keeping tabs on this. Um, again, I do appreciate everyone. And real quickly here again, this is something I've been working on. We, we have this all done. This is my hurricane camera, um, basically our hurricane camera project. And uh, if you guys go want to go check this out, be sure to check this out here. It's under the playlist and I'll kind of leave that in a card uh, towards the, uh, the beginning of this video. If you guys do want to go check this out here again, It'd be much appreciated. Your support is always, uh, always greatly appreciated. And I thank everyone here for tuning in and, and listening to what I have to say. Certainly very humbling. And we are uh, quickly approaching 900 subscribers. And I thank each and every one of you uh, for subscribing to our channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. With that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll see you guys back here then tomorrow afternoon. Stay safe, everyone. Have a great day. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.